because one of the other teams that will be featured on Saturday amongst a triple header on the NFL Network will be the Steelers at the Colts. Now, both these teams do have a winning record, but it doesn't really feel like they're two winning football teams. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, coming off that awful performance against the Patriots, have had to answer a lot of questions and deal with a lot of criticism. Obviously, Kenny Pickett is out, the offensive coordinator, all of that other fun stuff that came along with it. Now, T.J. Watt, the concussion protocol stuff, like all that other uh, fun stuff to deal with. Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers great, soon-to-be Hall of Famer, he was on his podcast, Footballing with Ben Roethlisberger, and he took issue not only with the timeout usage by the Pittsburgh Steelers, but also what happened to the Steeler way? Sometimes, I know it sounds crazy, sometimes it's better to take the five-yard delay a game than it is to waste a timeout. Sure. Because at the end of that game, if we had one more timeout, we, we, got, we have another chance. And so when you, when you lose timeouts because of like silly penalties, too many men on the field, not enough men on the field, I mean, just all this stuff, like you can't afford in the second half of games to burn silly timeouts and not to have them late in the game. And so to me, that, that is, that's bad. It's, it's a bad coaching. Yeah. It just feels like that's something that's kind of been lost on this team a little bit. You, you, it feels like the Steeler way is just not, listen, you've got some great leaders on defense. Don't get me wrong. Um, but and like, TJ and Minka, but, but you've got two sides of a football, but you don't have it on offense right now. And it's, it's just making it really hard. You're not seeing, in my opinion, the toughness on offense. Um, and, and I say toughness in the sense of a Steeler toughness. Mm. This isn't what it means to wear the black and gold. Yeah. This isn't what has been handed down from those teams in the 70s. The steel curtain, the, 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 the four Super Bowls, the, the Knowles, the Bradshaws, the Bl- I mean, all those people, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Maybe the, the, the tradition of the Pittsburgh Steelers is, 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 is done. Maybe it needs to be formed a new kind of way. I don't know. So a very optimistic outlook from Ben Roethlisberger on his former team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember. really felt like it came out of left field, didn't it? <sighs> Bro, I, I was right seven, here. eight years old. I used to walk to school. My parents didn't drive me. I didn't take a bus. I walked five miles to school. I remember I wore the same shoes. Um, even when it was snowing, it was raining, I, I walked to school. You know, it's like, okay, are you are, are you trying to say that they could never be as good as the teams you're on? I mean, is that where you're going with it? I mean, Five I can understand. Miles. No, Man. it was a joke. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you 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 blow it out of proportion. Like I feel like Ben is blowing it out of proportion in terms of what it is that he's saying. Like, sure, you you played on like you. First of all, if we're going to be clear on this, let's be clear. You inherited what what the steal away Damn. was. Like you weren't a part of of building that you you inherited that, so so you didn't have to come in and be anything other than what Ben Roethlisberger needed to be, and and the scenario that was was put in front of him, and and where Kenny Pickett is if he's taking a direct shot at Kenny Pickett, um, where where this offense is right now is in a state of of trying to figure out what their identity is, no doubt about it. I mean, you got Pouncey as as your center. You you know, you have guys like, you know, Jeff Hardings and 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 who's who's our guy that just went into the Hall of Fame maybe a year or so ago? Um Fan, Fanica, right? Alan Fanica. Like you you had some really really fine men and and adult men, mature leaders on that team you had the bus in the backfield i mean you you had some really really like great leaders and he talked about on the defense i won't even go to the defense side of the ball um but i just feel like that what he's saying like all right you could say one thing like okay that was a poor coaching moment right there for the timeout or whatever it may be but to go as far as to say this isn't the Steeler way and it, it has to start over and this and that i think that's a bit I think that's a bit extreme, and, and I almost feel like he's playing up to what the noise has started to kind of resonate and become in Pittsburgh or with the Pittsburgh fan base. It it, it just feels like it's, I mean, I don't know, maybe a little, I don't say over the top for reaction to a team that is facing injury, right? Kenny Pickett, their starter's not there. It, it's been Trubisky, and 
They moved on from Matt Canada. The offense was better when Pickett was the starter. It's obviously not quite as good with Trubisky in there, but I just I don't know. It feels just odd. Like I, it feels like a, a pretty big attack, and you you wonder who he's pointing to. I mean, is it Mike Tomlin? Is it someone else? But he he does bring up a, a valid point. Like we always hear at the end of game scenarios or two minute drives, you're battling time and distance. And every staff, every team I've ever been a part of, talks about them both equally, but they're not. They're not equal. The time's more important. Eventually, the time's going to run out, and you don't have any opportunity. Now, distance factors into that, but to his point, there's scenarios where you would rather waste you know, five yards here or there on a delay of game penalty as opposed to calling a timeout, where it, that might save – or be the difference in you winning or losing a game at the end to have another shot, whether that shot's from the fifty, from you know the the opposite, you know forty five, whatever the case is, you you still have a shot, and then who knows how that plays out. So it just it's interesting to me that that was one kind of small example, but you know I don't know, man. This team's still in the playoff hunt. It's not like they've had a abysmal season. You know they've 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 won despite facing a lot of adversity at times and uh it's and, and, and honestly like who knows what the season would have been like had they had you know a different oc you know kevin sullivan and and faulkner calling the plays earlier this year you know who knows where they would have be at this point like they haven't had a losing season in 20 years like i i know that yeah this you know there's a standard there in pittsburgh and all that but I mean, you, you can't win it every year. And last I checked, it wasn't like Roethlisberger was lighting the league up his final couple of seasons. Like there was, that, that's why there was a thought that they were going to eventually move on. Like I, I just, I'll take my chances with that organization that they'll be able to figure it out because they always have. Like so, when he mentions the '70s, it wasn't like they had one good era. It was in the '70s, and that was it. Man, they had the '70s. They were in a Super Bowl. You know, uh, in, or in AFC championships in the 90s. They were in yeah. a Super Bowl in the 90s. They won Super Bowls in the 2000s. Like, they figured it out through the generation. So the idea that they're just not going to be able to figure out when what's, what their next step is and how to have success when they've done it for, what, 75, 80 years of, of sustained success, I just I find it hard to believe. I just find it hard to believe that Ben Roethlisberger thinks he should be the voice of, of how that that Pittsburgh way, like what that is, like, I wouldn't say he's the greatest. I'd say Terry Bradshaw is probably the greatest Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback. Different time, different era, but he definitely won a lot of Super Bowls and he won a lot of games. But there are so many Pittsburgh Steelers that you would say, I mean, and I'm not trying to throw shade at at Ben Roethlisberger. I'm just being honest. There's so many more that you would say would be more of a, a like a voice to where you say you know what this guy did it the right way he's 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 been a leader he's been someone that's a part of the community um that would have a voice and say what that stealer way really is like and and if you're from there you you get that because you know the people who had came around did things in the community you know, kept their noses clean, didn't get in any type of off-field type of trouble or anything like that. So for me, I'm like, you're a beloved player. People people really, you know, bang with you. You don't need to, to come out and be, you know, critical in a way where you're calling out the way of, of that franchise. And I know for me, and I don't want to come across as hypocritical because in the past – when I got into media, I covered the the Washington team, the, the Commanders, and people would could easily say I shouldn't be the one that's talking about the culture of the team and different things like that. But one thing I I was always cognizant of when when I was speaking about how bad things were for Washington was that this is something that's cultural. It's a cultural deal. It's a cultural disconnect. It's 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 cultural decay. So I I wasn't there for the Super Bowl years. I wasn't around that for the Super Bowl years. I don't know what it was like during those years. So I'm not going to sit there and say what the what the Washington football team's way what it is from a perspective of something that I had I was never a part of and and there were names and players that were greater than my name. 
I think that that's where, to me, I think that's the mistake that he's making right now. Don't don't make it about that. Just make it about, okay, that was a bad call. Like, you'd like to have that one back. Great. Uh, this is a team that needs to find some better, some some leadership or, you know, develop some more leadership. Great. But when you come out, start being real critical, and then you start trying to connect it to the guys of the past, I can guarantee you there's dudes like Greg Lloyd and and, and LeVon Kirkland and, 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 you know, guys like that they're like man i I freaking rip your head off and hand it to you and tell you to go home with it and talking to ben roethlisberger like because that's the mentality like they're like it's a it's a it's a brotherhood like (laughs) very few others and when you get an opportunity to experience and i'm speaking from experience because i you know greg lloyd and and jerome bettis were were mentors of mine and so was the white white when I was growing up and just being around it and seeing how they, they worked, you know, the Rod Woodson's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of them, you know, Dwayne Woodruff, and he's not even one of the biggest names, but Dwayne Woodruff is what the Steeler way is, you know, guys like that. And so I, you know, I, I think he should be careful, you know, I mean, it's not that big of a, a deal, you know, in this scenario, but if you continue to be that type of voice where, Someone who's won Super Bowls and had so much success for that that franchise is is taking shots like that, pop shots. That's it's an unnecessary thing for someone of his stature and his status to do. It's not necessary. Lee, can you we make sure to send this out and title the clip Lavar Arrington calls Ben Roethlisberger a fake Pittsburgher. If you think about it, I just think there's some guys like the Steel Curtain. You you think about Pittsburgh, you think about the Steel Curtain. The steel curtain belongs to Mean Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood, those guys, the white, white, you know, those guys. And and that's anybody that came after that, you're you're fitting into that mold when you, you brought in, you know, Seals and, and Hasselrig and, and all those guys that, that were, you know, Brinson Buckner and all those guys that came after you're you're only filling in what the mold has been as it's been created. Lee, uh here's another one for you. Uh oh. Lavar Arrington says Ben Roethlisberger will never be Bubby Brister. Can we put no, that? He'll out, never please? be that he'll never right be now? he'll never be Terry Bradshaw. And Neil O'Donnell. Yeah, well that's true. He will never be one of them either. If you could much, also much do, better. If we much had, better than those if two. we have enough characters left, can you also include Mike Tomzak? So we can just well, go Tom Zach was a super cool dude, though. Wow. Yeah. Super cool dude. Yeah, you know. Ohio there State Buckeye. Mike Tom Zach. There you go. Yeah. He was a Buckeye. So, all right, so I feel like we got everything covered here. Did we cover all yeah, of it? I think so. I mean, I, I just think that the Steeler way, like, like let's, <laughs> let's not get carried away. <laughs> hey, Ben, <laughs> don't get carried We know you had a Hall of Fame career, and you're – your second best quarterback in the history of of the team. <laughs> just, just relax a little bit, though. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that's not throwing shade. That's just being honest. I know, like, I'm come just on, man. To stir the pot. Yeah, this is fun to on. do.